Hi guys, happy Sunday. Welcome to Closing Up with Essie where we do all things DIY home decor and organization hauls, thrifts, tips, and hacks for your home. My name is Esther and welcome back again to a home of simple, cozy, and inexpensive ideas. In today's video, I have an exciting video. It's something that has been like Pinterest inspired. I've been seeing so many photos of it. So I decided to do it and I'm going to actually uh, take along with you from scratch because I don't have a loop. It's something that I need a loop. So I'm going to be recycling um, a wooden board that I had, uh, that I removed from an old mirror uh, a, few, a few DIYs back. I'm sure you saw that uh, on the DIY room mirror so i'm going to be using that wooden frame and i'm going to be using at least one centimeter as nail so i'll be giving you the details uh on the on the uh on the video as we go along so i'm going to do this tapestry weaving so i love i love i love crocheting and knitting i love crochet and knitting so i also even have a page called essence you can check that out if you, if you haven't so you can follow me on essence as well for any crochet and knitwear and also for the starches that I have for yarn yeah, that have been remaining over the projects over time so I wanted to re, uh, to use that those yarns and what better way than to make a tapestry weaving so I'm going to do this with you guys so come along with me and I hope you enjoyed the video and if you haven't enjoyed the DIY family yet hit the subscribe button right now so that you can continue and let's grow the channel as well so guys come along with me let's do this so our supplies today we have this wooden frame, a hammer, a ruler and some scissors and I'll also be using a, a pencil and yarn. So first of all I need to measure uh, the frame because I want to, uh, to place some nails on this one and make a loop. So what I'm doing right now I'm just measuring uh, using my ruler and measuring each centimeter. So I'm going to use the uh, the smaller uh, the, the width not the length of the frame so that's what i'm doing and i'm doing it on both sides so just measuring and uh, making sure that i uh, the nails are at par so i'm making sure the measurements are on the same so i have already done the nailing part i did it off camera because it was such a it was something that i was doing for the first time so starting off the project, I'm going to use macrame uh, because uh, to, to make the base of the loom, uh, you need to use yarn which is very stiff, yarn that does not stretch. So what I have on hand right now is the macrame yarn and so this is what I'm going to do. The first thing you need to do is uh, tie a knot on one end of the nail. So I'm going to be going back and forth as you can see I'm showing you in the, uh, on, the, on the video, I'm going to just go back and forth. Uh, with the macrame until I get uh, what I need so the nails are all set as you can see I tried my best they are not leveled uh, but this will do it was a good project I really hammered my fingers on, on the process but yeah we are here so what I'm doing I'm tying on one end and then I'll just be going back and forth uh, on the nails and making sure that I don't skip any nail as you can see here I want almost skipped a nail so I'm just going to do with you uh, to do this with you guys this is something easy um, this is a, a mirror frame you can also use a canvas frame uh, just a wooden frame where you can uh, get the uh, you can put the nails you can also buy actually you can also buy a loom uh, on the tapestry or the uh, yarn shops I think you can get that uh, at Biashara Street maybe on, at Freemans you can get a loom so anyway i didn't want to spend much money because as you know this is a diy channel so yeah do it yourself if you can so that's what i'm doing i'm just going to make sure and make sure that uh, the yarn or uh, the 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 yarn that you're using or the string that you're using for the base for this loom uh, it's tight enough so make sure that uh, you're not loosening them so that because they will still have a loose tension uh, once you um, once you complete doing this so I'm going to do this uh, very quickly because it's repetitive and then once we finish we're going to uh, do the same fasten of the yarn and then cut it so that you can continue the next process Once 
you finish fastening off the uh, your base here and as you can see there is some tension at the end is a bit it's not too loose and it's not too uh, uh, stiff so what I'm doing I cut a white cardboard you can use any carton so what I cut this uh, in like a length of a ruler so I'm going to be using this uh, to uh, like uh, my base because uh, when I start uh, the tapestry weaving I don't want it to go all the way so I want it to uh, at least uh, give me some space so what I'm doing I'm just going alternating the strings uh, so one string up one string down one string up one string down so just making sure it is uh, yeah it is firm so it doesn't move so that's what i'm doing guys as you can see it's very easy just uh, making sure you have one string up one string down and it's just a repetitive process so this process we are going to be using again uh, using a roller because um as you will see uh, as we continue with the, the tapestry weaving having a, a cardboard in the bottom and having a ruler on the top uh, it helps a lot because it gives the work uh, it makes the work a bit easier so make sure that the carton is leveled up on the uh, on one side of the tapestry the side that you're starting with so now I'm going to cut a length of yarn I'm still going to use the same yarn the same macrame yarn that I started with that's what I'm going to start with because you still again want um, a very um, compact uh, beginning for your tapestry so what I'm doing I'm just holding the yarn here and then yeah we start so I'm going to show you two ways to do this tapestry weaving uh, one is you can use your hand and so you don't have to use any more uh, items uh, but then uh, you can also use a darning needle if you have one you can get a darning needle from the yarn shop as well as the loom so yeah so I bought a darning needle at Freeman's shop at Biashara Street so you can also get that uh, on any tapestry shop so what I'm doing as well as I, again make sure uh, when you're placing the ruler that you have only one string one string up one string down one string up one string down and make sure you don't have any spaces like you don't take two strings uh, at the same time so as you can see when uh, the project is leveled up it will level up the ruler it becomes so easy to see uh, the strings that you'll be working with because what we are going to do is weaving goes back and forth so the first part of the weaving uh, you take uh, you go through the yarns that are up and and then the second one you alternate with the yarns that are down so that's what i'm doing so with the ruler uh, the part that is up it's very easy uh, to just move along as you can see on the video so then um yeah so at this point I discovered I had done something wrong so I'm just rectifying by using the ruler just removing the part that I had done wrong and adjusting so that I can continue with my project so this is already done and yeah so now we are going to continue uh, and I'm going to be using a hair comb uh, just brushing down uh, the the strings or the end so that I can make sure that it is stable and uh, compact on the end so now right now I'm going down uh, the strings that were uh, below so the first part you go with the strings that are up and then now uh, you go to the strings that are down so as you can see now i'm going back so it's a back and forth process actually it's so repetitive uh yeah so i'll do this with you guys uh let me just make the base and then we'll come back here again when we are changing the yarn color and then uh, when you're starting the project uh you don't tie off a knot on the end you just leave a space uh uh, just a, a string on the end so i'm just brushing it down as you can see so just making sure that they are compact and then uh, you also want to make sure that you don't um, you don't uh, you make sure that the tension of the this uh, the yarn that you're using it's not too tight because uh, if it is too tight then you're going to uh, make sure make the uh, the strings that you made on the loop they will be a bit tight and you'll not be able to get a good project so you still want to keep the same uh, width so yeah that's it
finish the part first part so i have cut a black yarn i want to use a black yarn as my second yarn so i'm just adjusting the rest so that i can have the, the same thing that i said before so just placing as you can see it's very easy to move uh, the yarns up so the first part of the yarn where the ruler is it's very easy to go across and then now once you do that then now you go back again and as you can see i'm leaving a thread on the other side on the edge so just leave that uh, those yarns on the edge don't uh, make a knot and then i'll show you what you're going to do uh, with them once you finish the project so continue brushing down your yarn to make sure you have uh, the right tension so now i'm going uh, using the below just it's an alternate it's an alternate process as you can see up above yarn and then above, uh, the below strands of yarn so yeah that's it guys so it's a very repetitive process but i'll also be doing a few um a few tricks here and there so i'll also uh, get back to you once we are doing that so guys watch until the end to see the end product I started up on a different uh, uh, yarn and uh, all these yarns that I'm using have different thickness so I'm trying to uh, come up with a pattern here so I, I the first three rows of this yarn I went back and forth uh, from end to end and my, right now I'm just going back and forth until the center and going back so you will see the effect of this uh, it will give me a very nice pattern where I can now put uh, the other part of the uh, of the of the uh, of the project a different yarn and just get a different uh, pattern into it and a different feel so that's what I'm doing here as you can see I'm not going back and forth until the end so you can also do this as well guys to just uh, come up with the pattern I did the green pattern as you can see I did a few rolls so right now I'm just going to use this white here now to comp to fill up the space that I didn't complete so what I'm doing I'm just folding the yarn uh, I'm doing it in an alternate an alternate uh, move so I'm using my thumb and my small finger alternately so that I can get a good ball of yarn so I have already done that then you need to uh, tie it up and then yeah you can now have uh, your thread to use so again always leave a thread uh, some length of thread uh, when you're starting a project and then I'll show you how to uh, to knit it up once we finish so it's a very easy process so guys don't put any notes on your project so what I'm doing I'm just going back and forth as you can see I have put my ruler in place so for this one I want to show you uh, another uh, design for this using the white yarn so guys stay tuned and always uh, keep the brush uh, the hair brush the, or the hair comb uh, near you because you need to make sure that uh, you have uh, 
but the pattern is working well so as you can see um, I'm just going back and forth so there are strings that are above and there are strings that are below so yeah it's an alternate process so you just continue the same way and brush it down so what I'm doing this white yarn here that I'm using it has a different uh, it has a different width from the other one the green one so as you can see it's a bit small and compact than the green one but then uh, first thing uh, for the base of the yarn when you're starting with the yarn before you do any pattern or before you introduce a different uh, thing to the tapestry weaving you always need to make sure that you have at least three rows of that yarn to just make a good base or good foundation so everything goes foundation you have to have a good foundation for everything that you do so it is the same thing with weaving so this project is my first weaving project guys so there might be some mistakes that you might find here and there but i'm still learning as well and i want uh, you guys to learn with me and i would like to see what you do so i'm taking a wooden dowel uh, from uh, a project i was making with wooden dowels you can actually use a pencil or just something uh, like this so what i'm going to do i'm going to be placing the wooden dowel on top of the yarn so as i'm going to the next side so on top of the yarn and then i'm going to go now to each strand so here i'm not alternating the strand i'm going to use each strand as you can see so then bring the yarn down uh, below the wooden dowel go again to the next string yarn down make sure you're tucking the yarn uh, under the wooden dowel so that uh, we can create the pattern we want so each string so we are just going to do the same it's a repetitive process but make sure guys that uh, you uh, place the yarn on each string and make sure that you're tucking the yarn uh, below the wooden dowel so I'm going to do this guys as you can see I'm just doing it slowly by slowly so that you guys can be able to see it and then make sure that the yarn is also not too stiff on the wooden dial so you can keep rotating the wooden dial to make sure that you have a good um, a good width. So once you finish this pattern, don't remove the wooden dowel immediately because you're going to, you haven't uh, secured the pattern. So we are going to now continue with what you were doing before, at least for three rows. And then now you'll be able to move the wooden dowel and brush your pattern off. the wooden dowel and now it's time to remove the dowel then now i want again to continue and do the same pattern at least uh, try and do the pattern for at least three times depending on the um on the width of the yarn that you're using uh, because some yarns are weighted yarn so they have a bit thicker length and then some are very lightweight like this one i'm using it's lightweight so i need to do a few rows of this pattern so that it can be visible well enough 
so I'm going to do the same thing as you can see just uh, tucking it out and then removing the wooden guts it's a repetitive process I'll do it first uh, with you guys and then you can continue with the next step a few rows uh, with different colors now i want to show you how to use the dunning needle so the dunning needle has a big head so you can be able to put any uh, any width of any thread which has different width so i'm using this pink here and as you can see the dunning needle makes the work very easy because uh, when i was using the yarn itself uh, the ball of yarn it was a bit complicated because uh, the strands of yarn uh, the, str the strands of the loom are very small so the dunning needle makes your work easier it makes uh, your project faster so this is what i'll be using for uh, the next uh, until i finish the project so you'll be able to see how i'm doing it and right now now you can be able to see what i was saying about the alternate uh, string so you're going up and back and forth each string so the strings above you place the yarn above and then the strings below you place the yarn on the alternate end so as you can see that's what i'm doing and just making sure that um, i don't skip any uh, strand of yarn So decided to use uh, to use the same pattern that I had done with the green part uh, just going until the center of my work and then brushing it off for a few rows so I did at least uh, seven to eight rows with this yarn and then now uh, once I'm done I'm going to show you how to secure uh, the yarn so you just uh, on the end just leave uh, the yarn as it is don't uh, secure it on pink any not so I'm going to use uh, this uh, 
can give French yarn and then uh, with the toughest with needle you can if you can remember with the white needle uh, we were not there was a separate line between the green and white but right now uh, when you come to this other end you need to tuck the yarn in so with the dunning you can be able to do that so I'm tucking in the yarn uh, through the pink yarn and then I'll uh, continue with my project and then always make sure that the tension of the yarn is a bit uh, loose uh, because you don't want uh, the strands of uh, the macrame yarn to be very stiff because it will give you a different shape so I'm using the wooden dowel again to make the pattern as you can see using the dunning needle makes your work easier so what I'm doing, I'm going on to every strand and then tucking down the yarn under the wooden dowel. So it's very easy as you can see guys, it's just like self-explanatory. So if you do this, you're going to get uh, this effect. So I'll do this for one row and then I'll continue the same thing that I was doing for at least three rows. And I'm always making sure that the tension of the wooden dial is a bit uh, with a bit room for it to also because I'll still remove it. Uh, but once I go three more rows, so guys, just watch until the end, and you're going to see how it comes out. rows with a different yarn and as you can see now I'm using a very thick yarn I'm using different strands of uh, black yarn so with thick yarns uh, you have a very different desired effect you see with the thin yarns they were very compact but now with the thick yarn you can be able to see the effect of the strands that you are using the base strand so it gives a very cool effect and a very desired effect so that's why we uh, the tapestry weaving is so exciting because you can use any type of yarn any width any length 
uh, however you want it and then you can it's a playful project a playful diy and yeah as you can see guys i'm enjoying myself and you guys this is so cool i really love it and yeah i'm just using different colors of yarn just uh, experimenting and yeah doing um the dull colors the cool colors the cute colors everything so you guys can yeah do this and it is not limiting limiting guys with different colors and I repeated the same pattern that we were doing before so right now I want to I'm almost finishing the project as you can see I'm almost uh, at the edge of the loom so I'm going to be securing uh, the edge of the loom again uh, using the same macrame yarn and then uh, we are going now to finish up the project and I'll show you the next step on how you're going now to secure your project from the loom and be able now to uh, continue with whatever you're making so yeah guys now i have already ended the project and now it's time to secure it so what i'm doing i'm just going to cut uh, uh, in between the loom the nail so i'm cutting the strands that i had made on the loom so i'm cutting it i don't know i'm not able to show you this but i'll do it in a few minutes i'll be able to show you this and then i'm tying the two strands of the yarn securely and making sure it's, a, uh, it's completely tight so that i can secure my work so that's what i'm doing just cutting the yarn using scissors so this is where the scissors come in so i'm just cutting in between the nails and then securing and the yarn so you'll be able to see this guys i'm going to do it a bit faster so that it repetitive it doesn't become boring for you guys you're done with uh, the first uh, side uh, you want to turn your work and then go back to the other side so I have already removed the cotton that was there and now I'm just tying off on this other end so you, that now I can have the uh, my work separate from the loom then uh, now it's time to secure the ends that we are leaving on the edges so you're going to use the tapestry needle so this is very important you just place the, uh, the ends and then secure them at the back so just uh, placing them in different sections uh, once you uh, at least 
to to tie in and then uh, then you can tie off the yarn and cut the extra yarn so as you can see this is what i'm doing uh, on my ends i'll be doing this with you guys and then once uh, all my yarns are tucked in uh, we're going to have a very clean project and continue with the next part I said I want to make a mini throw pillow because I did use, make a very big tapestry. I'm going to be uh, using um, this um, it's a pillowcase. So um, because it's green, it's going to go with the color scheme that I have on my tapestry. So I'm going to cut. I'm just measuring, and uh, when you're cutting uh, a material, you need to make sure that you are leaving at least two or three inches. Uh, so that you can be able to sew it up. So I'm going to be hand stitching this or hand sewing this because I don't have a sewing machine and also I don't have a fabric glue on hand. Uh, you can also use fabric glue if you have it. So I'm just going to sew it uh, all the way on the edge uh, and then leave one uh, edge uh, open so that I can be able now to uh, insert the my piece of stitches once I'm done. So I finished sewing and I have overturned my work as you can see I have a mini pillow now I need to uh, stitch it up again I said you can uh, actually you can with the tapestry uh, you can actually use a uh, fabric glue if you have fabric glue you just uh, place the glue on the uh, on the um, on the pillow cover that you're using and then uh, make sure that your tapestry is on the right side up so that the one that uh, is going to go on the fabric glue is the wrong side so that you can have a clean uh, a clean work so you can do this or you can also even sew it if you have a sewing machine so maybe once i purchase a sewing machine i'll be able to show you guys how you can do it to secure your, your work so right now what i have is a needle and a thread and that's what i'm going to use and you guys as you can see it's a diy when i finish it you won't even know whether it was sewed uh, sewed with a needle or whatever i did so you guys come along with me let's finish it at this project i'm going to be putting a zipper on the edge so that i can securely um, have the pillow stuck inside and yeah so this is something that you can actually wash up and and use a uh, and use because uh, for this tapestry it's just that my loom was not big enough but if you have a big enough room guys you can make even your pillows like your pillow covers with this uh, method so this is the end product guys i love this this mini pillow and i'll be doing more of these uh, of these projects uh, coming soon
enjoyed today's video guys it was such such an interesting video that i really wanted to do an interesting diy of course uh, let me know in the comment section below what you think about my tapestry uh, mini throw pillow and if you'd like to see more of this content on tapestry weaving and let us do it together as well so guys let me know in the comment section below if it was something that you'd like to do or if something that you would like to know more of i'm uh, always happy to read your comments guys uh if you haven't joined our di family yet kindly hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell it is free and it helps my channel grow a lot if you like this video kindly uh hit that like button and uh yeah guys share my videos all the content that i make is for you guys uh, share it with your friends with your family guys and if it's something that you'd like to do and if you have any inquiries just dm me on my social media pages at closing up with se on instagram and facebook and for any business inquiries you can send me an email at closing up with se at gmail.com so guys, I, uh, this year we are on the road to 100k subscribers. I know it's a bit of bingwas, but we can do it. So guys, let's continue uh, sharing my content. Let's continue subscribing. Yeah, and guys, this encourages me to continue uh, bringing more content here on YouTube. Cheers, guys. Have a lovely week and see you in the next one.